absolutely magnificent. <sighs> if it's as good as this, we'll be doing well. Well, it's a lovely Melbourne's day down at one of my favourite parts of Melbourne, down at Southgate, right next to the Yarra. What a beautiful river. I know you may sneer at our river, but we love the Yarra. I'm sorry, guys, we really do. Anyway, we're not talking about that. We're talking about nice food, too. Perfect place to have nice food. There's some wonderful restaurants here at Southgate. So let's see what I can whip up. I'm, I'm thinking of a nice sort of Asian chicken salad with just a, some bits and pieces and a nice coconut milk marinade or coconut cream marinade I should say. So just a half a cup of coconut cream. That's accurately measured isn't it? Good splash or two of fish sauce. You use this actually for the dressing as well. There was actually I got a bit excited with the the Fish sauce, didn't I? I've got about 300 pieces. A couple of chilies, nice and finely chopped. I, I think I'll change the measurements to three tons of fish sauce. Because I was talking, you see, once you start talking, you're gone. Hopeless. Hopeless. Juice of half a lime is plenty, as long as it's a nice, juicy one. Well, that is. You could add some palm sugar if you wanted. I don't think it needs it, to be honest, but you could. You know, to, to be... And one plump clove of garlic. I don't know whether you noticed, because I dropped the other one. So it's now only one plump as opposed to two. <laughs> and just whisk that up. And as I said, I'm going to use this for the dressing as well as a little bit for a marinade. And when I say a little bit, you don't need much. I've just got some lovely chicken tenderloins here. You know what a chicken tenderloin is? That's the, that's the little fillet at the back of the chicken. You know when you get a chicken breast, there's that little fillet at the back? Well, that's what a tenderloin is. And just toss that in there. Now, you can leave it for half an hour if you like, but if you are tossing it really, really well, we can just put it aside while we make the salad and we will be all right. Why am I moving that? I don't know why I'm moving that. And I've lost my other bowl. What did I do with my other bowl? I know I had it. Oh, there it is. Going a bit strange. I've got some noodles in there, some vermicelli noodles. Now, all I've done with those is put them in that bowl and I've poured boiling water over them. And when I say boiling, I mean literally boiling. And then I've just leave, left them to sit for about 15 minutes, at which stage we have then drained them really well. Now, I've got some fresh asparagus here, some lovely local asparagus, which I've peeled just to make it more tender. And then I've put it in a big pot of boiling water, and the second it came back to the boil, I pulled it out. Make sure the water's salted. And we're just going to cut it up. And then we'll start thinking about putting this salad together. That can go in with the noodles. We've got some cherry tomatoes that we've cut in half. We've got some roasted, unsalted peanuts. I made a salad like this recently when I didn't have any unsalted peanuts, and I used salted. It was actually quite interesting. It worked quite well, so you could use salted if you wanted to. And a decent amount of mint leaves, just torn, and I could have done with some more coriander, but my coriander went walkabout. I don't know what happened to it. I think Glenn, my new assistant, took it home for his dinner. He most probably was doing something, needed some coriander and didn't think I'd notice. He's stealing tricks off Mr Moon, isn't he? So we've got that happening. We won't dress that as yet. 
And the reason we won't dress it is yet because I'm just going to cook the chickens and I don't want this to go soggy. I want it to have some crispness to it, so I'll dress it at the last moment. All right, now I've used that for raw chicken, so let's just get rid of that. And I'm just lighting the flame. We'll put a little bit of oil in there. Just some peanut oil, veggie oil, whichever you like. And when that's hot, I'm going to cook this chicken. And I'll add some sauce to it as it goes along, just to make a nice little juice, which can be part of the salad as well. When I say the sauce, I'm really talking about the marinade stroke dressing, aren't I? Right, the other good thing about those tenderloins is, apart from the fact they are terribly tender, <laughs> is they don't take long to cook. Because they're actually quite thin, and because they're so tender, they really do cook very quickly. So you get something that is lovely and moist, and got lots of flavour. We just pour a little bit of this oil off, guys, before we start adding the coconut mix. I don't want it too oily. All right, guys, let's start thinking of putting our salad together because this is about ready. And even though I've used the marinade, it's now been brought up to heat. And I need those tongs. So I've got some boiling water there. I'll just dip them in, the, in that, which will sterilise them. And I'll grab a chucks to wipe those. Turn that off. And let's start thinking about tossing this salad together. Just into that dressing there. There's just a little bit of dressing. Now, you can shred this if you like, or you can just cut it into a few pieces like I'm going to. Oh, goodness, my knife needs a sharpen, doesn't it? Let's just put the... Sorry, mate, I'm right in front of you. I think you can see what's happening, though. I don't know if you can. Let's just grab our bowl. Let's put some noodles in the bottom. All right, guys, let's clean it up a bit. Let's have a little taste. I'm lucky I'm allowed to taste this. That dressing with those caramelised pan juices, excuse me, I shouldn't be speaking with my mouth full, should I? But I just want to say it's magnificent.
a slab of beef. Easiest way to cook it, barbecue or in the oven. Fairly hot oven, and I've got a nice kilo piece of porterhouse. An easy way to serve for about, oh, I'd say about four people, because it does shrink quite a bit, you know, at high heat. But you need a marinade, or you don't have to have a marinade, you can serve it plain. Just smear it with some really good mustard and put some salt and pepper on it, and away you go. Keep the juices in. But today, I'm talking marinade. So what I've got there is three quarters of a cup of good beef stock. About three or four tablespoons of olive oil, some fresh rosemary, which I have chopped, a bit of chilli paste. That's optional, because that's up to you. You know, if you're not a great chilli fan, leave it out. I don't mind. I'm not going to come around to your house and give you a hard time. Promise me. I promise you, I meant. Promise me. Promise me too. And then a good splash of a good Japanese soy. Let this kick them in, which is the creme de la creme. About a tablespoon and about a tablespoon of Worcester sauce. The juice of the lemon. Look, it depends how juicy the lemon is, a whole lemon or a half. And these are fairly large, so we'll see what happens. We'll see how much juice comes out, won't we? But I'll cut it in quarters, because when they're this large, it can be a bit hard to put it through your squeezer. So we'll just use three quarters of the lemon. It's pretty to waste it. And also, you do have to worry about lemon juice cooking the beef you know, the acidity in it, so making sort of the edges a bit raggedy. Now, I just whisk that up and throw in our piece of beef, as I said, one kilo. Trimmed fairly well, decent amount of fat on, on the side, you know. I'll show you what we'll do with that later, just to sort of cook it off a bit. But what I want you to do now is I just want you to put it into this marinade. It's fairly thin, but I'm going to make a sort of a sauce out of it. Just a dipping sauce. Well, no. Ian, you're not making a dipping sauce. What I'm going to make is a basting sauce. And at the end, you end up with some pan juices that will have that wonderful flavour. So I want you to put that into the fridge for an hour. And then I want you to keep on basting and turning it and then pull it out. And then we will continue. And we've got some nice things happening here. We've got some mushrooms and capsicums. We're making a nice mustard steak sauce. Looking good. And while that's happening, I'll just get my garnish ready. I'm doing some mushrooms and some red capsicums. And to that, I'm then going to add some rosemary. Once again, some lemon, some slightly similar taste. You know, I'm not putting Worcester and soy in, but I'm, you know, putting the lemon and the, and the rosemary seasonings, all those kind of things. I'll put the rest of that. And I will then just cut this one in half. That in as well. So we're putting about one and a half lemons in, but that's mainly because, as you can see, it's hardly any juice in them. Not great lemons. Wayne has been promising me, our cameraman Wayne, has been promising me for weeks that he's going to bring in some from home. He says they're the best lemons in the world. We'll see, won't we? We will see. Right. They're free too. We like free. Actually, knowing him, he most really charged me. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> what did my old mate Gavin Disney say to me years ago? He said, always look after the cameramen. They're the ones who make you look good. So I better shut up, haven't I? All right, salt and pepper. I can't help it if I like my jokes. So a decent amount of salt and pepper and some garlic. Just, you know, one or two cloves. These are very tiny, so I'm using three. But... You know, not too much. You know, I'm not trying to do those Italian potatoes, you know, which have all the, the whole cloves of garlic, which I actually love, but, but that's not what I'm trying to do. And we just toss that around. And after the beef's been in for half an hour, we'll put those in... Oh, maybe, look, let's make it 20 minutes. We'll put these in the lower shelf, all right? So I'll start off just leaving those like that, and then we'll put it in the lower shelf. Now into our tray, which should be hot. We put our meat and we put it fat side down just to start the cooking process. And then into 220. I knew one of the ovens was like that. We put it into this lower oven at 220. And after about, what shall we say? After about 
15 minutes, we start adding some of the marinating liquid, which we just add in the bottom of the pan and we start basting the beef. Now, the beef, I reckon for medium rare, will take us about 35 minutes. But what I've got here is I've got one of these instant read thermometers, which has all the degrees. So that'll make life easy, won't it? We'll just make this mustard. Mustard steak sauce, it is. Three good tablespoons of Dijon mustard. Three good tablespoons, I'll use a different one. Three good tablespoons of Dijon grain mustard. Quarter of a cup of olive oil. Oh, about a quarter of a red onion, very, very finely chopped. Some pepper. Now, I don't know whether you need salt, but you can always taste it at the end and see if you need salt. But do put some pepper in, but I wouldn't worry about the salt at this stage. And I also want to throw in some parsley, just some Italian parsley or the flat leaf parsley, reasonably roughly chopped. And the reason I want to throw that in, I just want to add a little bit of fresh herb taste, because we're basically using processed mustards, which are beautiful mustards, might I say, but we want to add something that just gives it a little bit of freshness, don't we? And once we've added the parsley and tasted it for salt, that's it. We just set it aside, leave it to develop its flavours, and it's a bit of fun. You could add, if you like, a little bit of Worcester. I'm not, but you could. I love Worcester sauce. So do the Americans. Tea. You see them putting it on. You, you go into restaurants and they come up with little jugs in really posh restaurants, and it's because they're hiding the fact that the customer in the posh restaurant is pouring Worcester sauce over everything. Or Worcestershire, maybe I should say. But it really, oh, there we are. I was wondering where I was. It really is Worcestershire, isn't it? We all call it Worcester. All right, in there. Mix that up. As I said, just taste it for salt. And that's a really nice, simple steak sauce that will go with any beef. And it'll work well with that marinade. No salt. Doesn't need it. It's lovely. Like that. All right. After about 15 minutes, they go, actually, I've got a spare oven. They'll go in the top oven. Steak, got my instant read thermometer. Keep on adding some of that marinade and keep on basting it. And we're gonna have a lovely steak dinner. That's a long time. How long since you heard people call it a steak dinner? I reckon about 15 or 20 years. Anyway, nice dish and not too different. Right, you see what I mean about it shrinking quite a bit. But it sort of it sort of puffs up, doesn't it? <laughs> it shrinks a little. Anyway, let's just see how it's cooked with my instant read little number. I've cooked it a bit more for you, I think. So it'll... Oh, that says medium rare. Let's see if they're right. I'm always intrigued by these. I don't know how they work. You know, the instant read. I know the other ones that you poke in and just leave them, but these, these are the new fedangled ones. Right, I've got my veggies. I just pulled those out because I rested the beef a bit, obviously. You can throw in other veggies, of course. I just happen to have, have these lurking around, some Swiss browns and some nice capsicum. Now, I don't know whether you like it, American style, which is, is very thick, or English style, which is thin. So I'll do it in between. Now, do you reckon you need two? That's a pretty big slice, isn't it? Right. We'll just pretend we'll just have one today. All right. Some of this nice steak sauce just alongside. Wasn't supposed to go there, guys. If you want a little bit of the pan juices, I actually don't think you need it because look how juicy that is. Look, look at that lovely juice there. And I'll just grab a bit of paper towel just to take that off. Because that spoils all my fun. All right. 
nice marinated roasted sirloin of beef, mustard steak sauce, some sautéed Swiss browns, and some capsicum, and a little bit of talent on my part, smidgen. <laughs> Using a meat thermometer makes life very simple. I must admit it really does, because that's cooked absolutely perfectly, medium rare, exactly how I wanted it. Cheers, guys. Well, that's about all for today's show, but just before I go, a little quote from Herb Shriver. My wife does wonderful things with leftovers. She throws them out. <laughs> See you later. Celebrity Let Me Succeed. The Epic Billboard Awards. May 22. Live from the red carpet on E at 8. Followed by the awards. Live at 10. Only on the hits.